interpreted your answer to Mr. Cummings' question about geographically and with which sector of the economy, if someone really was serious about getting a job right now, they had moved to Texas and practice medicine. Is that right? If you have that option, it's not a bad one. Well, look, <clears throat> let me ask you another question. We, we deal here with, with non-farm non payrolls, is that correct? Mm -hmm. But there's yes. going to be an effect from what is happening in the central part of this country. It kind of gets kind of gets obscured in the headlines of all the other news, but there is a huge issue with flooding of the farmland of the central part of the United States that border the Mississippi River. Do you have an idea as to how that is going to affect things? Because we see Missouri and Arkansas, Memphis, Tennessee is, uh, they said, waters up to the sidewalks. What, what, what sort of effect is that going to have, or is that just uh, built into the, sort of baked into the process, baked into the cake where we can have a tough agricultural year? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, we, we don't we don't collect data on on farm employment. Uh, the Department of Agriculture does, though I, I believe, and they they pay a fair amount of attention to to data on on em employment in farms. So, I'm probably not the right one to ask. But if those jobs that. are not there during the growing season, and they right. certainly may not be if the fields are underwater, then that will push people into into looking for work in other sectors. Is that correct? There's bound to be a ripple effect. No pun intended. Right. into other parts of the of the job market is that yeah, correct? yeah in fact what, what would happen is, is is it it would not probably not show up in our payroll jobs numbers but it it could well show up in our unemployment numbers because the the uh, there are two different surveys and the coverage is slightly different uh, with the, with the uh, unemployment rate we're, we're making phone calls so we'll catch some of those jobs with the phone calls but with the payroll jobs we're only talking to non-farm establishments that that have uh, that that pay payroll taxes Basically. Well, again, it's an enormous tragedy and, and a story that is sort of not below the radar screen for most Americans that uh, I'm, I'm told by people who live there is the flood on the proportions of 1927, 1928, uh, when fully 1% of the usable housing stock in the United States of America ended up underwater. I mean, it's the same similar sort of circumstance today, so I, I can't help but feel that's going to have a profound effect on whatever fragile recovery we're experiencing now, this, this is going to take a toll. Do you have a sense as to how the, the actual size of the labor force itself, the behavior of that during what has been this very prolonged recession? I mean, that, that seems like the number of the sort of the total size of the labor force is smaller today than what we used to talk about. Um, uh, well, yes, that, that's right. The, uh, the labor force participation rate literally gives you some idea of that, and, and the labor force participation rate is at a, as a very low level. And I, I think the statistics that, that, uh, that were up there a minute ago, it's the lowest level since the 80s at some point. Um, so that, that, is, that is a concern. And that is going to, you know, we, we talk about all the, tr the trouble we're having grappling with deficits and what have you and needing to get people back into the workforce and, and paying taxes. I mean, it's just going to be harder to do that, isn't it? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'll, I'll yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Doctor. Commissioner, we're going to let you go in a moment. I wanted to, one question I meant to ask earlier with